Today on Free Field Training, we are going to talk about the police duty belt, where I'm at with the project and where I'm going, and we're going to take some suggestions from all of you. Stick around. Where are you going? Get out of the way! Now the original duty belt video that I did, you can see in the little link up at the top of the video here, explains kind of the whole concept of how the belt was put together. I'm gonna to recap over a little bit, but my main goal of this project is to get suggestions from all of you of the ways in which I can improve my setup. You see, the duty belt isn't the only thing that we use to hold gear. It is our primary gear carriage solution. However, it is definitely not the only thing. A major thing that we have that we carry around every day is our vest. And the way that my vest is set up now is entirely different from the way it's going to be set up in the future. So some changes are coming down the road to the free field training police duty belt, the belt that I use every day for work. We're gonna go through it really quick here and I'm gonna give you a quick outline of the way my belt is now, what's changed, and then I'm gonna take some comments from the Instagram live feed about suggestions and ideas for how I can improve the belt a little bit in the future. So for right now, what I am using to attach the belt to my pants is a Velcro inner belt, which attaches to the Velcro on the outer belt on all of the components that I've attached on the inside. And I'm using a pair of 911 gear suspenders. These have worked out really well for me. We've got a couple of reviews of them on the channel. You should check them out if you have back issues like I do. To attach the belt directly to the inner belt, which is attached to my pants, I use a set of four belt keepers. And I'm going to show you here, the last video was a little over a year ago, and you can see this is what honest wear looks like on police equipment. Stuff starts to wear. Hopefully you can see the difference between the gear that I'm using in this video and the gear I've used and that you've seen in videos past. You can see how quickly this stuff wears out. When you have to buy your own gear, like I do at the department that I work at, you see that this stuff very quickly it starts to add up. This is what honest wear looks like. This is the difference between people that buy stuff and just post pictures of it on Instagram and in real life. So right up front on the belt is a pair of Hatch First Master gloves and it is in a 911 gear uh, multi-position duty belt holder. Uh, these Hatch First Master gloves are spectral lined, leather glove, and the only downside to them really, they're really, really cut resistant. The downside to them though is that they're not really, really washable. So the only option you have really to clean these effectively is to use hand sanitizer on them which starts to destroy the leather. This is a brand new pair. I lost the other pair that I replaced these with about four or five months ago. But leather gloves, very important for a duty belt. I have them attached to the belt itself. I used to keep them in the pocket of my pants and I had my leather, or sorry, my rubber gloves up front here. And I've switched that up with the rubber gloves on the back and these up front so that way I don't forget them in my car and end up having to go back to the station to get them after I've gotten out on the road. This holder I really like from 911 gear because it attaches via Velcro and you don't have to slide it through loops and disassemble the whole belt to put the thing on there. I could put it up front or I could put it all the way in the back not that I'd necessarily want to put them all the way in the back, but if I did, I could put this anywhere because it comes with Velcro that allows you to mount it either horizontal or vertical. I could even put this on a Molly, which I may do in the future. Next to my right side is my handcuff pouch. You can see again, the honest wear that's been going on with this handcuff pouch. A lot of this stuff is due to be replaced in the near future. Inside, I have two pairs of handcuffs, one pair of chain handcuffs and one pair of hinge handcuffs. Notice I have one set up so that I can grab them easily with my left hand and the other set up and loaded so I can grab them easily with my right hand. Got a whole video on comparing different types of handcuffs and why I use this pair. Behind that, I have a Safariland SLS holster. I'm gonna put a link for a lot of this stuff down in the description down below. And in it, I have a Glock 35 with a TLR2 mounted on it. This is a 40 caliber Glock handgun with the extended barrel and a better trigger. We use 40 caliber Remington Golden Saber right now at work and because of all the reasons that I posted up in the video why cops use 40 and why I end up using 40 at work explains in pretty good detail why I'm kind of stuck with 40 caliber where I'm at. 
Behind that, you'll notice if you watched from my original duty belt video, the difference with the baton holder. This is a new Safari Land type of baton holder. It is hard plastic, even though it looks like it's leather. It's got a basket weave finish, but it's a hard plastic one, so it's been wearing like iron. And in it, I have my Mononadnock baton. I really like the Mononadnock batons because they open and close without you having to beat them off of things like with a lot of friction lock batons. I hear that Asp has one of these now, and I may be getting that one when this one breaks. But this one's got a good 10 years on it, hasn't broken on me yet. Don't worry, I'll break it eventually. If for no other reason than I want to buy new stuff. And then, on the back of the belt, the only thing that I'll really keep on the back of my belt is a glove holder with rubber gloves in it. Note I've switched to nitro gloves anytime that I can get them, either off the ambulance or from the hospital. front, we've got the triple mag holder. I have three 15 round Glock mags for 40 caliber Glocks. These will work in my Glock 22, the 23, the 27, or the 35. They're the full size Glock 22 slash Glock 35 magazines. I carry three of them because in this Safari Land triple out holder, I can fit three in this space. I'd normally get two with one of my old holders, and it has a tensioning device on it that clamps them in there, really holds them tight in place. And additionally, I've never met anyone at the end of a gunfight who said, man, I really wish I hadn't brought all of that ammo. So it's a little extra insurance. Maybe I need it, maybe I don't. Jury's still out on that, but it makes me feel better. Behind that is my issued Taser X26P. We went from the original Taser X26 to the X26P a few years ago. I'm not sure which one I had in that original duty belt video. And Currently, we are using nothing but the Taser 25-foot extra penetration cartridges with the green doors on the front. I have been very pleased with the performance of the extra penetration cartridges, especially in the winter time. It used to be a problem that when we were using the yellow doored cartridges or the gray doored cartridges, the 15-foot or the 21-foot or the 25-foot cartridges out on the road Usually in the winter, they wouldn't stick far enough into clothing and you wouldn't get good contact. With the green door cartridges, it's worked out pretty well. The yellow ones, I we weren't ever supposed to be using on the street. I don't know how that ever happened, but for a while we were issuing them at work. Those are only supposed to be training cartridges for law enforcement, but say la vie. At the back is my currently issued radio. This is one of those things that's going to be changing in the near future. The radio that I have is an HT1000 with the Motorola public safety microphone attached to it. And this thing is its almost as old as my last trainee. Literally, it's this over, over 20 year old radio. It's worked out really well for me, but we're going to a newer radio that has a lot more channels and actually tells you what channel you're on. So you don't have to look, you can just turn the dial and it'll click over to different agencies and different departments and allow you to hear what channel you're on so you're not even having to look down at the radio or do the count thing. It's really, really cool. I don't have it yet, so this is the one that I'm currently using. In the future, I'm looking to maybe move this to my vest, which brings us on to my vest. This is my vest cover as I'm currently using it. Sands the patches that would cause me problems at work. Time right now, so one thing I may have left off of the original duty belt video is that in the winter, I keep my hat up here on my lapel. It's just a really, really cheap hat. And these things get lost and dirty and fallen and broken and ripped up and all of that all the time it works, so we don't spend a lot of money on them. The agency is going to having a star logo on the patch with the department name on it. Uh, we haven't gone there completely yet, and as long as I can get away with it, I'm just gonna use these because I only really use it at night when I'm getting out of the car, and I don't really have anybody to, to impress at three o'clock in the morning. And it's uniform, it meets standards, and they're only like 10 bucks. On the other upper lapel, of the vest, I have my tourniquet. Now, we are talking about going away from the soft tee wides and toward cat tourniquets as we reissue them. And I've already got some cat tourniquets, so I may just go that route when I build up the vest in the future. Now, the soft tee wide works really well, and I just have it attached on there with a black hair tie doubled over the top. Holds it in place really well without me having to spend $20, give it to some dude who made a thing doohickey to attach a tourniquet to my vest. I just do it the way that normal people do it 
and I attach it on there with rubber bands or black hair ties. So that way, in a hurry, if I need it, I can grab it and pull on it, and the hair ties will break, and I can get it, but most of the time it's not gonna flop off. Moving down the vest cover, I have center line on my chest. This is where I attach the microphone for my radio. I clip it right on here, and I put it through a black hair tie on there. Again, you don't need a doohickey to attach your microphone to your vest and keep it on there. Hair tie works pretty well. Tie it on there, makes a loop, then it won't come off. It's interesting to note at this juncture, I'm sure you can see it on video, this thing looks dirty. It's not, it's five years old. This is what wear looks like on police equipment when it's been actually used. Uh, down here in the upper pockets, on my left hand side, I keep my pen, gel ink pen, and got whole videos on writing instruments for law enforcement, why I use gel ink pens for work, I really like them and just a normal pad of paper. I know this is gonna come as a little weird to our Canadian and European brothers, but in the United States, we just write things down on a normal pad of paper. It's not a big deal. We don't have special issued pads with serial numbers or any of that. It's one of the advantages of being a cop in the United States. I can get these at Walgreens for 79 cents when they're on sale. Ordinarily, I'd have the police department patch up here. It's a star patch that goes up in this three inch round circle, and then my name on the other side is taken off for the video for obvious reasons. In my right front pocket of my vest, I have the Through Night Archer 1A V3. It's a 200 lumen little single double A flashlight. And this is my backup light right now. I've got a review video on this if you're so interested to look it up. It's worked out pretty well as a backup light. You don't need anything really spectacular. You don't need anything really spectacular. And with the confines of the way I can carry gear, I'd either have to put another thing on my belt and I'm not that big of a guy, or I'd have to find some way to mount this onto a vest that doesn't have any molly attachments. And that's where we're really changing it up in the future is our new vests are gonna have molly along the bottom, either instead of or in addition to the pockets and the flashlight carrier. And I'm thinking I may be able to get away with using a larger backup light. But for right now, it's working out pretty well. I'd say in the last year and a half, I've only really had to use my backup light half a dozen times, so it hasn't become a real big issue. In the pocket, also, I have a Leatherman Wave. This is my preferred multi-tool, not for every task, but for law enforcement tasks. This one works really well, and the reason that I like it is, on top of having a multi-tool, all of the blades are on the outside, and they're marked. There's a little bit of jimping on this blade where you can feel which blade is a serrated sheep's foot blade. So if I need to do, do any rescue cutting, cut away clothes, anything like that in emergency, I can feel even in the dark which blade I'm looking for and be able to deploy it. Really, really nice feature. I also keep up here a black Sharpie marker. It's great for solving a whole bunch of those little problems we have in life. You have to write on a toe sticker to stick on a car. It's a lot easier to see it if you do it in Sharpie marker. Also, if you're putting things into evidence, you wanna be able to find them. Put your little mark on the evidence bag somewhere so that you know which evidence is yours. It's also good for if you have to apply a tourniquet or you have to triage people, having something that can write on anything is good. You get into a huge major incident and you have to mark rooms as clear. There's no way to more clearly mark them as clear than with a marker. These are my car keys for work and also the building keys. The building keys now are just an RFID fob, which is really nice. You don't have to have a key. We used to have push locks where you like click buttons to get in the building, like 1960s style stuff. It's nice we now have bulletproof doors and bulletproof glass all over the building and key fobs. It's like living in the future. And then I have my car keys. We have a master key system, so all the cars take the same couple of keys, a gate key for at work, and a handcuff key. I like the big paddle handcuff keys instead of the pen style handcuff keys. Makes it a lot easier to use because it's got a lot of space on it to be able to turn, but it's not so big and pointy that I end up sticking myself with it and the pocket clips don't get grabbed and pulled out and bent and then I lose the thing which is just a pain in the butt. I mark my car keys with little notches. You can see the little notch that I put in that key. This is the brand new cars and the older 2009 and before cars, that's our master key system separated. So that way at night, I can look up, look at the side of the car, know what year it is, and be able to feel without having to look at the keys and get a flashlight out, which key it is on my key ring that I need. And I attach all of it to a Kuboton, which is kind of showing my age a little bit, but hey, 
what are you gonna do? I carry a Kuboton, and even though it's fallen out of favor, it can be useful as a point method to be able to get in and dig at people if they're being resistive. Dig in at a pressure point and get them to give up or give up whatever it is that they have in their hands. Also, really effective for if you drop your keys in the snow, the black stick sticking out of the snow is a great way to be able to find your keys so they don't sink all the way down to the bottom of eight or nine inches of snow. It's happened to me more than once. I'm really a big fan of Kubotons, even though they're not in style anymore. For my duty knife, I carry a CRKT Thunderbolt 2. They're not made anymore, but I'm in no hurry to replace it as long as it works really well, and it does. In my front pocket, I carry some cash for your inevitable trips to the gas station for coffee at three o'clock in the morning and a flash drive. And like I talked about on my original video, I carry a flash drive around for all of the paperwork. I no longer have to have piles of books. I keep everything on the flash drive, and if I need a new guy that I'm training to do a report, I can have him do a report on a word processor, load it on the flash drive, we can come back to it, so I don't have to worry about the computer system at work screwing up. Finally up front, I've got my flashlight. I'm currently using a Streamlight Stinger LED, one of the old puts out about 350 lumens. It's a single switch. I, I was never really a fan of the tail cap switches in this format of light because they tend to turn on when it's attached to your vest like this, especially with the, the bottom that isn't really heavily reinforced. The switch is starting to go bad on this. It will momentary on, but if I click it on, sometimes it'll stick. So I'm looking to replace that in the future. I don't know if I'm gonna to go to Streamlight or something else, but since we're going to Molly attachments on the vest, it might be a little easier to find a pouch for it, which means I can transfer from a Streamlight to something else kind of at my whim. Another thing that we're changing up on the new vests is we are going to go to a police patch on the back of the vest. Currently, we are not allowed to put police patches on the back. That's changing with the new vest covers. When we buy them, we're allowed to put a large police patch back here, which as you've seen in my other videos, check out the videos up there. It's really nice to have identification from all the way around so we avoid blue on blue fire situations. In the carrier is my soft body armor, and then up front I have a small level three rated steel plate. I'm looking at maybe changing that to a ceramic or a polyethylene plate if I can get away with it when I buy the new carrier, which is gonna be sometime this week now that I've been issued the new vest. All right, so that is all there is fit to print about my duty belt and the vest and what's changing on it. So if you have suggestions or comments about it, throw them down in the comment section down below. If you hate the police, police, throw all that down in the comments down below. We always love hearing from people who got a traffic ticket and take it out on the rest of the world instead of taking personal responsibility for their actions. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.